This kind of study that we have done so far has never been done. In a sense, it means that there was an ancestor from which the fly brain and the mouse brain and our brain derived. And it also means that this ancestral brain was rather complex. The behavior that we nowadays show, going to sleep, being hungry, is very much similarly regulated like a fly going to sleep or being hungry. And that comes down to these two brain structures, the central complex in insects and the basal ganglia in vertebrates. There is a huge difference in size and appearance. But nevertheless, the genes that underlie the formation of these brain structures are identical. If the basal ganglia or substructures of the basal ganglia do not function properly, you can have mental health problems. They can range from depression to sleep disorders to movement abnormalities like you see in Parkinson's disease or in motor neuron disease. The flies are in a kind of an arena and on top of it is a camera and with which we can record their behavior. What is important here is that the flies are left to their own devices. They are in their arena and they can run around. There's a light source underneath which helps us to identify the flies when they run around and the way they run around then helps us to extract their behavioral phenotypes. It means that if a fly has a certain mutation in a gene or if we have inactivated nerve cells in the central complex, we can then look how has the fly's behavior been altered. Interestingly and almost surprisingly is if you have a malfunction of the central complex in flies, you see similar phenotypes. The fly has sleep disorders, the fly has, shows motor abnormalities, and the fly shows difficulties in social interaction. There were pieces of information that already suggested that not only the way certain genetic pathways work are similar, but also that there must be a similarity in the kind of how behavior is controlled. We have now a kind of an intellectual framework to understand, uh, to better understand what goes wrong if we have uh, a malformation of the basal ganglia or a dysfunction of the basal ganglia. And as surprising as it may sound, actually, if we look at the malbehavior of a fly and what underlies this malbehavior, it can inform uh, our studies in humans and in patients.